all right guys so in this session basically we are going to talk about how do we call um rest connector from activity we have already learned how to do that from a data page now this time we will do it from an activity okay so we have a rest connector that we created in the previous session let's just have a look at that so it was into b3 int employee request sorry within the employee we have this connector this is the connector that we are going to call okay now this connector needs a request property setup. So how do we do that actually? So we have a demo prop, demo uh, activity. I'm going to remove everything from this demo activity. And you need to define an integration class because you need to uh, you need to basically uh, call the connector from the integration class. So you need to set the request and accept the response on the integration class okay so i'm going to define a class let's say imp int the integration of this uh, the definition of this class is going to be the class where we have our integration uh, basically a rest connector defined all right so now i have this page this page has property okay let's say that i'm going to pass the employee id parameter as a parameter okay so id will have to be passed as a parameter so i'm going to set a property for the request property on this page that we have defined in the integration class and you will be able to access the property now because you are in that class and this is going to be param dot id whatever you pass in the activity now that is done there is a method called connect uh, rest you will have to specify this page here so it will automatically set you need to select the service name It's not taking the name automatically. Let me put that. If we want to override the endpoint URL. We can do that. We want to run the get method. Do we want to run in parallel or queue? Well, at this point of time, we haven't learned about run in parallel and queue, so I'm going to just run it. It will run and it will automatically create the response page on this page. I'm going to just do a show page of the imp page to see what we are getting at the end we have already learned how to call a connector from data page this is from the for an activity so i'm passing one i'm going to trace it as well so you guys can see it okay so this is successful we got the record as well okay now if you look at the Tracer. Let's look at the tracer to see how steps were executed. The first thing happened. We started the activity. The activity set that parameter into the request page. So see, the request property is initialized by the response, and then Pega executes its own set of rules to invoke a connector. The connector is being called, and ultimately, that's where the connector uh, connect rest method is ending. If you click on this, a response property has automatically been created and mapped with the data that we got as a return from the external system. Now you have this page on the clipboard and on that page you have a page property response. Under that you have a page property data and from where you can read the data written by uh, written by the application, uh, sorry, written by the API. So that's exactly how we call connector from an activity so i was mentioning activity is a very powerful rule you can pretty much 
uh, do a lot of i mean pretty much almost everything we can do it here uh, so calling a connector basically is also one of the feature of the activity it's very i mean you do not have to define data page whenever it's just that the problem is if you use connect rest or uh, obj save and all those methods in the activity the reusability get decreased but otherwise this is a fast forward way to call a connector or save data pages and save data and this is a database table and other stuff so this is where we will conclude this session